Dear Mr. Tom Tellebaum, I received your notice about your company's plans to tear down my home and put in a mall. I am, of course, requesting you drop these plans. I've never been accused of having the gift of gab, but this request of mine requires a little backstory. So if you don't mind, I'll start with my home. My wife and I built our home high on a tree. A tree that grew from a barge which floats on a sea. Complete with a garden, a front porch, a living room, and even a state-of-the-art bathroom. I live here with my wife, who just happens to be life-impaired, or I suppose dead. It all depends on how you look at it, or how you don't look at it, which is exactly how I look at it. But we keep things fresh. We take walks in the backyard. We garden together. We even play video games together. Unfortunately, we only have one controller and can only play one player at a time. Personally, I'd love to have a second controller, but the old lady says we just can't afford it. There aren't many hobbies when you live in a house that is as secluded as ours, which is why your plans baffle me all the more. One hobby I do have is stargazing. Sometimes I look up at the stars and wonder what it would be like to be a star. Another hobby of mine is bird fishing. Some may even call it a trade, but that's the last thing I would do with it. Bird fishing is a long-standing tradition in my family. My father was a bird fisherman. His father was a bird fisherman. And his father was an accountant whose best friend was a bird fisherman. I have the tendency to babble, so hopefully you're still reading. It was last spring and I just received your second notice. There I was, lying out, enjoying a beautiful afternoon, watching a butterfly flutter about when I was introduced to the creature, or Todd as he prefers to be called. At first I was quite apprehensive to the little fellow, but I eventually grew fond of him. So we took walks in the backyard. We gardened together. We even played video games together. Only one player at a time, but fun nonetheless. I even managed to coax him into coming up into the windmill room to stargaze. He was scared at first, but he eventually popped up. And yet, as welcome as this new friendship was, it wasn't enough to take my mind off the difficult road ahead. With the demolition date closing in, I knew I had to make some tough decisions. The first was to let my wife go. I just couldn't bear for her to see our house go down. She loved it too much, and I love her too much. Before I could even tell Todd what was going on, he was gone, just as quickly and mysteriously as he had come. And so, with the demolition date just months away, I was left to wait alone. The lonely Mr. Scrim. The days turned to weeks. Weeks turned to months.
I was all alone and time became just another thing to forget. Until one day, It was my wife, and she had a gift. I have no clue how she got back. She's terrible with directions. But more than anything, I was just glad that we could spend these last few days in our home together. We quickly got back to doing the things we loved. Even video games. This time, two players, of course. I even found a way to get her up into the windmill room so she could stargaze with me. Turns out, she's pretty good with a telescope. It was Todd, and he brought his family. So you see, Mr. Tom Tillabop, this is the dilemma. I am no longer the lonely Mr. Scrim. I have a family to protect now. So this is why I'm sending you this letter and a formal request to abandon your company's plans to tear down my home to put in a shopping mall. A mall that sits on a barge that floats on a sea. I mean, that doesn't even rhyme. Sincerely, Mr. Scrim.